Greetings and thank you for watching Electric City Video. This is your editor, Frank Etheridge, appearing off screen to be safe and socially distanced from a very special guest, um, beloved Bon Vivant, a man about town, Jerry Farmer, a professional comedian. Thank um, you for that, Frank. <laughs> and we're here. in the mail. The check's in the mail. And we're, uh, I'm not cheap, but I am affordable. We, uh, we're here at the Pound House where he, uh, Jerry has a comedy show coming up. But um, first off, uh, Jerry, I was going to ask you, what, what makes somebody funny? Frank, if I knew that, I'd be funny. But I tell you, part of how I got, I'm 83. I started doing jokes when I was eight or nine years old because I was skinny. This is all true. I lived it. Skinny, big nose, raised Jewish in a southern town. And we had to, we felt anyway, we had to overcome a lot. So I was the class clown. And then I did it well. And I started playing the piano, I did that okay. So between that, I used to date cheerleaders. The whole idea was to be able to date to fly blue-eyed cheerleaders in Greensboro, North Carolina. That's my truth, I lived it. Uh, that's how I started. But if you read a lot about comedians, John Belushi, rest his soul, he was a very neurotic guy. He wanted to be loved. Rodney Dangerfield, loved. Robin Williams, loved. And it's cute when you're young, but if you get to be 83 and you still need that, I want attention. I don't feel I need the attention. I want it. It's great. I'm not going to crumble anymore. If I have people, I've had many people walk out on my show. I've had many club owners not use me a second time. But face it, and I don't like it, but I'm intact. I'm not going to jump off the building. I would jump off a building if my Tar Heels lose to Duke next Thursday. That's jumpable. Well, I read somewhere once where um, they said the equation for comedy is tragedy plus time. Do you think there's any truth to that? Or Yes. You remember the uh, the Three Stooges? They're cartoons. They're comedies. The, the mask. Woo -woo -woo. Yeah, right. The mask. Laughter. Crying. That was on the beginning of their movie. That's not just comedy, it's human beings, I think. I mean, I meet a lot of depressed people who are millionaires. They're just not getting it together. Mm -hmm. So I think with comedy, people see us perform. And, and today more than ever, comics are more real than they used to be. We used to be actors on stage. Mm -hmm. Lenny Bruce, I saw him. Remember Lenny Bruce? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 12, 13 years old. A maverick aunt took me to see him in Baltimore. I knew he was real. He wasn't, hey, did you hear about the two guys? He, he wasn't doing jokes, doing political anxiety then. That was a long time ago. So he was an inspiration too. Um, and uh, so you mentioned this earlier too, is uh, I've seen your uh, stand up a few times and it seems like you always delve into the, your identity as a um, Southern man and Jewish man. Um, is there anywhere, any boundaries that are off limits as far as ethnic jokes or racial jokes that you find, or do you like sort of push them out? Or? What's worked when it does for me is self-effacing. If I'm gonna talk about anybody else, I'll degrade me first or denigrate me to let people know that I'm not above the grade. Most of my targets actually have been white football players, the team, sort of arrogant bully guys, and they usually like it. That's usually the target of somebody. You know, uh, I mean, look, Don Rickles, I don't know if you know, you know who Don mm -hmm. Rickles is. He made a huge living making fun of everybody. Blacks, Jews, gays, mafia. And he did it for 50 years, never got the fist fight. I think people trusted that he was a good guy. This is fun time. Yeah. Um, and now obviously we're in the time of COVID. Um, what, um, what, what, you know, how do you approach being funny or doing a comedy show during a time like this, during the pandemic well, with all this death? Going our on? friend Mamie will tell you this, and others we have mutual friends. I appreciate your time. This has been a good time for people to assess themselves, to read. People call me, what are you doing? What am I going to do? I said, well, the books everywhere. Man, for me personally, that's how I've gotten through it. Though I do write something now and then. I hope you'll be able to hear some of the new things. But the COVID has been, it's a sad time, but it's been a great time for people to read and relearn that the brain works and they can learn something new, not just feel the agony of the COVID. Are there any, is there anything, any uh, jokes or any uh, 
boundaries as off limits as far as COVID? That's a great question for me, Frank, because I've had, let me quote Bill Maher to answer the question. Bill Maher said a year ago, yeah, you know, he has everybody on the show, Republican, Democrat, liberals, conservative. And somebody said, he was making fun of Trump. So the guy said, how can you do that? He said, I make $18 million a year. And I can do, and I'm, and I'm lucky. He said this, and I love it. He said, I can do about whatever I want. I'm rich. Only two kinds of Americans can say the truth. Rich ones and poor ones. The ones in the middle that are selling something, they have to be. So my approach to the stage has never been really a maverick. I do poke fun. But if somebody is obese, I don't make fun of them. I'd rather take a, really, a 25-year-old stud and make fun of them because they've been getting all the attention. That's sort of my instinct when I'm performing. Okay. So if you're a 25-year-old stud that played basketball, prepare to be a target at my show. How has COVID impacted uh, your ability to make a living? I mean, performance, live performance has just been well, they, shut some, down. Some people complain about socialism. I'm, Social Security has been good for me. I've worked hard, I've paid taxes. I, I'm going to eat. I haven't had but three jobs since last March. So it's impacted the comedy business because a good comedy club is full mm. and close. So that's, it's not been good. There's a lot of people in your profession that are struggling, I'm sure. Struggling. Yeah. A lot. Um, and so you, I know, if I'm not mistaken, you ventured down to Columbus from Atlanta. How has uh, the reception been to you in Columbus and how has Columbus allowed you to, uh, you know, focus on your craft? Well, you know, I've been blessed by knowing Columbus 40 years ago. I was working down here for country clubs and Actually, Tom Jones family had a restaurant that worked for Villanova. Yeah. I think they used to do. I mean, and then Al Who there was a place worked for Al Who. So I knew Columbus. And when Atlanta just got too busy traffic, I moved here, and of course Buddy now is a good friend. So it's been very receptive. I just happened to come at a time of COVID. Actually, the last show at the loft, the last show was my birthday party there, March. And they closed up the next day. Hmm. Maybe I closed it. I'm not sure. <laughs> God, God. Um, and so we're here at the uh, Rochelle Pound Inn in the historic district, and uh, you and some other com local comedians have a, a show, My Funny Valentine, coming up. What can you tell us about that event? Well, Frank, there's a young man named James Etchison who is the star of the No Shame. You know, that Friday night, pretty famous. People come from around, not just Columbus. He's their, their man, and he's a friend, a young friend, a youngster, very funny, really smart comedian. He's a guest. And a friend of mine, DeMoon Oakley, from Atlanta, who's a young protege of Dave Chappelle, he's gonna be on the show. And Mamie main, named it, it's called My Funny Valentine. And we all need to laugh, and it's outside on the veranda. The space that seats about 120, and we're only gonna have I think 35 max. And that's going to be uh, Friday night, uh, February 12th. Right. Is that, right next Friday. Friday. Yeah, next Friday, 7.30 in the evening. Is that right? 7.30. Okay. Ish. I always put an ISH, but yeah. somebody will party at eight, you know, we're going to hold it. So it could be 7.45, 7.30. And are there tickets available in advance? It sounds like people might want yes, to know that. They can go on. I know it's online. It's online. Search the interwebs. Pardon? Is it search the interwebs? Our show, yeah. You know what? I don't know. It'd be, there's a phone number on it. I guess they could call Rothschild Pound home. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Jerry, it's always great uh, talking to you and trading jazz with you. Frank, so I appreciate I hope this it. is the most boring you've ever been because if it is, you'll have a charm life. <laughs> I've been boring. Um, no, I hope I'm the most boring thing you have. <laughs> All right. Jerry Farber, y'all, thanks very much. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you.